Hello, and welcome again to the Shadow Gallery. I'll be your host, James Donnelly, as always. Um, and in this particular segment, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Garth Ennis and some of his more recent work. Now, I'm not going to belabor the obvious, which is that Garth Ennis is a brilliant uh, comic author. He's just, you know, he's almost in a class by himself. There are, are so few really great uh, and really prolific writers out there, um, you know, that can do the super, you know, that can do some superhero stuff, but can also do, you know, in a class that is literary, you know, and can do it consistently. You know, in, in the, you know, in the 80s uh, and part of the 90s, we seem to have a lot more. We, you know, well, I, I shouldn't say a lot more, but we had at least two very recognizable names as, you know, particularly in the 80s, and that was Frank Miller and Alan Moore. Grant Morrison does fall a little bit in there, um, but not quite so much as uh, as Alan and Frank. They really, you know, they really redefined the the genre, you know, as anyone can attest to. Um, but you know, these days, um, I would I would say that you do have, you know, uh, certainly a few. You've got Ed Brubaker, you know, I mean, he's got his thumbs in quite a few different pies. Uh, you know, because he can do the superhero stuff, he can do the, you know, like the noirish, you know, stuff like Criminal and the pulp stuff like uh, Incognito. Um, and uh, and then you've got, uh, you know, Brian K. Vaughan, who, you know, if you go way back to, you know, just about not too long after I started doing this vlog series, um, you know, I have a three-part tribute to his work, you know, specifically with, uh, you know, Runaways, Why the Last Man, and Ex Machina, um, which are some of the preeminent works of the last decade or so. Um, and Garth, I've talked about quite a few times, you know, just the stuff that he's done, uh, you know, doing Preacher, uh, you know, was genius. It's, it's still, you know, my favorite, uh, you know, my favorite long, long-going uh, comic that's ever been out, aside from Why the Last Man. Um, and, uh, you know, doing things like the reboot of Punisher, and, uh, or not the reboot, but just really the, uh, you know, making him important and cool again. Um, and so, but, uh, you know, then, you know, going on to, you know, then doing things like War Stories, and then Garth, uh, Garth Ennis' uh, Battlefields, um, the series that he did for Dynamite, but now we're going to talk about some comics that I've caught up on um, that I'm really sorry that I fell out of uh, or didn't even really know about. Um, and those are The Boys and Crossed. Now, I have the first couple of trades of Boys and then I started collecting for a while. It got through like issue 20 odd something. Um, and then a, uh, one of my friends here uh, gave me. Uh, all the back issues of the boys that he had that I didn't that I hadn't read yet, including uh, the the spinoffs uh, Hero Gasm and uh, Highland Laddie, uh, which is Huey's story. You know, uh, him Huey going back home after an incident with the boys that uh, you know just uh, made him kind of look at things a little bit differently. And then um, going back to uh, and then going to you know and then reading also Crossed. Uh, which, if you're not familiar with, is a, you know it's very much kind of in the the vein of you know something like The Walking Dead, which is not a bad thing, uh, certainly by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and it's uh, but it's not zombies. It is you know it is kind of post-apocalyptic. But it's not zombies that are out there. It's these it's humans that are like zombies. But it's they're basically what happens is they're reduced to their basest, most evil selves, and so I mean they they do have thought and they do have you know some logic, um, and uh, what is noticeable about them is the way that they have this kind of cross like uh, rash uh, going across their face, um, and that's how they're identified. Um, the boys, so we'll, we'll talk about the boys for a little while. Um, I was so glad to catch up on that, uh, basically through the most recent issue. 
uh, because, you know, Puregasm was, uh, that I did actually pick up because, it, I, you know, I just, with a cover like the first issue, if you've seen it, <laughs> it it's, you know, because basically, you know, Garth, you know, he hates superheroes. He hates them with a passion. Um, and he thought, well, you know, you know, and one of the things about the boys that he and Derek, uh, Derek Robertson set out to do was that they were kind of trying to out preacher preacher to, you know, to fill it with even more sex and more violence and more, uh, you know, uh, commentary on the world. Um, and, you know, and, you know, but it do obviously it doesn't have the heart of preacher. It doesn't have the soul of preacher. Um, but it is wickedly sharp with its, you know, with the, the fun that it has with superheroes and, you know, I, it's it's hard to say fun because you know a lot of them turn out to be you know uh, you know rapists and pedophiles and just psychotic killers and uh, you know it's it's the universe you know, that the picture that he paints of superheroes is is pretty fucking bleak um, but it's still pretty entertaining uh, when when it cuts right down to it it's still a good read it's still a fun read and a very intriguing one. Um, but the one that I enjoyed the most out of this work was the Highland Laddie. Um, not just because of its unusual characters, not because of just, you know, what was going on, but uh, his kind of... Um, the sort of reconciliation of Huey and Annie. Uh, it only, I mean, it literally... Uh, had me choked up. I thought I was. I actually thought I was going to cry, and that had. I haven't cried uh, reading a comic book uh, since the finale of uh, Joss Whedon's run on uh, Astonishing X Men, the giant size uh, Astonishing X Men number one, um, because that was an unbelievably ridiculously beautiful and uh, you know like heart wrenching comic. Um, and just, you know, perfect end to a perfect run, so, um, but, uh, Crossed, now, if you haven't read Crossed, like I said, it is about the most profane, it's Avatar Press, and they're, you know, they're kind of experts on really profane, really disgusting, really, uh, you know, uh, you know, pseudo-pornographic, um, you know, lots of sex, lots of violence, lots of nudity, um, you know, like if, you, if you've ever seen an issue of Faust, for, uh, for example, uh, that gives you a good idea of what Avatar Press is into, uh, or Warren Ellis' Strange, uh, strange, uh, ki uh, strange Kiss, or whatever the hell it's called, um, you know, that's, it's pretty fucking out there, uh, but yeah, they will go to the extremes that other publishers will not, and Crossed is definitely going to extremes. Um, you know, there's stuff in there that is like once you see, you cannot unsee. You know, it's just kind of burned on your brain. And it's a surprisingly well done comic. Now, I made the kind of mistake of reading the follow up to that, which is Crossed Family Values, which is um, where uh, basically David Lapham. Uh, of Stray Bullets fame, and uh, you know, he did a really great a miniseries, uh, you know, Daredevil and Punisher uh, miniseries a couple of years ago, um, and that was even more uh, graphic in its violence and its sex, and it's just you know, and its themes were frankly pretty offensive, um, and I know that's sort of the point. But there were just extremes that it went to that I just felt just way too uncomfortable with. And not because of, you know, because I've, you know, I've read stuff like that before, but this just, it seemed like it was just way too gratuitous. And sometimes gratuitousness is okay, sometimes it's not. Family values it, it can kind of be racked up to a guilty pleasure at best. Because uh, it's not very well written, it's not very well drawn, and like I said, it's just offensive across the board. Um, so, but anyway, Garth Ennis, really, check out his stuff, everything that he's done, like, from Hitman to Crossed, it's all good. So, I'm going to leave you now, so see you next time.